Hey y'all, hey, we are back for another review of All the Queen's Men. We are on season three, episode five, entitled Lost and Found. Last episode, um, Trouble wanted to be down. She wanted to get jumped in the gang so bad. She wanted to prove her loyalty. And so Madam gives her a gun and tells her, hey, could you please um, do me the honor of taking Casting over off the map for me? He has been a pest. He's been a pest to me. So that is what I would like for you to do. And then you'll earn your spot on the main stage. We pick up back there. And now she is backpedaling and talking about, oh, he's a cop. Well, duh. That's why we're here. And then she's like, well, you know that cops are going to come looking for me because he's a cop. If I do this, they're going to be looking for me. Duh, again. That's the skin you have to put in the game. And um, Madam Tasha, I'm like, listen, you want to be down so bad. You want to be loyal so bad. Well, um, you want to be on the main stage so bad. So what's the problem? What What's that problem? In my Jocelyn Hernandez voice, what's the problem? Um... And she didn't know, you know, she had to do all this to be down. And Matter reminds her, like, yeah, it's a gang. It's my gang. I'm the leader of the gang, and you will be jumped in. And this is what you have to do in order to get jumped in. So what what's what's the holdup? And so she's like, Listen, it's, it's too much. She she keeps she physically cannot muster up the courage. You see what she keeps trying to do it. She keeps trying to will herself to do it, and she just not built like that um she wants she was like she makes a counter she's like hey maybe i can steal some information for you maybe i can do something else and she was like mm -mm, this this is how we roll you want to be amongst me and my guys this is what we do so go ahead and do what you gotta do and so um Madam takes the gun away from her and shoots in the direction of Casanova, just with no hesitation, without a second thought. She doesn't actually shoot him, but she's so sure, I guess, to show trouble how, how easy it is if that's what she wanted to do. Um, and um, she reminds her, like, hey, when I say you're not ready, trust me when I tell you that you're not ready, basically. And so, you know, trouble's going to be shaking up the whole episode after this little fiasco. Sis don't have nothing, nothing to say. She ain't never not had nothing to say since her first day here. Matter of fact, not even then. She was a pest before she even got um, access to work at the club. So she's rendered speechless this whole entire episode. Let's just say that. Um, so she's dismissed. Casanova is begging for his life. Begging for his life. And um, she tells him this quaint story about dating somebody. And he was an average Joe. For about six weeks, everything was nice, but she realized that it was missing something. It was missing the thrill. Um, and by thrill, she means that she lives for the thrill of knowing that she may or may not ever get caught by the cops. So she's really sold out to this thing. And um, she's basically, she with the shits. She's here for all the smoke that could possibly come because he's trying to say, you know, hey, the cops are going to come in here. If I don't check in the night, they're going to come kicking the door. Da, da, da. She was like, okay, cool. Sounds like a fun night to me. I live for this. She listen basically, the more stories, I live for this type of thing. So what else you got? It's, it's not going to face me. And then he begs her, like, hey, can I write a note to my kid? And um, unmoved. That did not gain her any sympathy. Um, And, you know, then he gets worked up. He's like, no, you know, no, leave my kid alone. She's like, no, kids are off limits. Don't calm your nuts. We're fine. We're good. But that also did not gain you any sympathy. I'm sorry to tell you. Um, And so, and so, she assures him that kids are off limits. But correct me if I'm wrong. When Doc saw Davis in the club that night, he was there tracking someone's child, like the sinister child, somebody that she wanted to kidnap in order to get leverage. Am I wrong? Maybe she, the person that she was there to, someone's kid, maybe they were a young adult. I don't know. But I just feel like she was, they were there to essentially abduct someone's kid. I'm sure it wouldn't have, okay, boom. Duh. They were at a bar and they know that that child frequents that bar. So not really child. I'm going to say 21 and up. So someone's young adult is who they were going to kidnap, abduct or whatever. But I mean, it's still somebody's child. Well, hell, everybody's somebody's child. I guess it really don't matter, right? Right. Anyway, and she goes on to tell him, like, listen, I am genetically, physically, meant. I am incapable of... I'm incapable of showing remorse or um, care and concern and all these, you know, emotions that you're trying to invoke by, you know, begging and saying all these things. I have lit literally been diagnosed as a psychopath, which explains um, in seasons one and two, she she takes these medications um, on and off. And I never really 
picked up what they were for, which, hell, I probably could have figured it out with the way she behaves, but, you know, confirmation that she is a legit diagnosed psychopath, and she was diagnosed at 11, and she said, um, the professional, I don't know if it's a psychiatrist, like, I don't know the profession, the professional, you know, did tell her, you know, about her behavior and said she beat the lady to a bloody pole. Like, girl, you've been off your rocker for, for quite some time, and... That makes sense because your dad is not too far behind. He's not very far behind, I'm willing to believe. Um, yeah, so moving right along. Blue is able to trace down the marked money that they found last episode. And whoever the girl is, she is Midnight's VIP client. She's been coming in looking for him quite often. Um, she is confirmed to be spending Madam's marked money. And, um, she has been paying Midnight with that money in VIP. So we need to distinguish whether it was her and Midnight that are co-conspiring or if she just likes Midnight. And so that money that was stolen that ended up in her hands is being given back to the club inadvertently. So that's what we're going to figure out by the end of this episode. All right. In the meantime, in between time, Trouble is back upstairs and she is dazed. She is flabbergasted. She is rendered speechless. She don't want to be bothered with None of this shit because the game is a bit too deep for her. She ain't sound up all this. Um, she's she's quiet and she don't have nothing to say for once. Like I said, um, Madam sees her and checks her temperature. She's like, you good? Like, well, you, you all right? She's like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't got nothing to say. I'm good. I am good. And so she tells Blue, you know, what happened with Trouble. And, um, you know, they talk about that. And then Blue shows her the marked bills that she just took from the girl that's looking for Kava Kasha, which is going to go okay for now. That's looking for Midnight. Um, and Madam looked at her and she was like, ain't no way you coming in here balling like that every night. You're giving very much new money vibes. And there's a certain look to people with new money. You know, you you, you got, you drip down head to toe. You the loudest one in the room. Just that type of thing. It's giving very much new money vibes. And so, you know, they're going to go address her by the end of the episode. Um, again, to distinguish if Midnight might be working with her or not. Amp and Big D get into a pissing match in the locker room. Um, Fuego is trying to calm them down, you know, trying to be the peacemaker or whatever, because him and Amp have been bonding. Of course, Amp is probably drunk or high out of his mind. And he's just being real nasty to that man. Like, is you my mama? Is you my, is you my B word? Like, why are you all up on me? Blah, blah, blah. Just being real rude to him for no reason. Um, and, the, and then, you know, storm outs as usual. And the other dudes are trying to let Big Big D know, like, hey, you need to leave Dime alone. Like, Amp, he been on one lately, and that's his ex-girl, and it's just too close to home. And Big D is like, listen, I never wanted no smoke. But I, I also want you to know I ain't no punk. And if it comes down to me handling my business, I'm going to do what I got to do. Which I don't see anything wrong with that. I'm not mad at all, my, my friend, because you only got too many more punks in you. And playing in my face before we just gonna have to get it get it rocking. It, it just is what it is. And so um, I'm sure it'll come down to that eventually because Dime is you know playing into the game as well. And so that's just gonna further convolute the crap that's already going on in this club. Midnight goes to see his VIP Miss K, and the lady has some peculiar. That's right, got the word the first time. Peculiar fantasies and by that i mean she's willing to pay top dollar for him to hmm, how do i pg this thing to all right oh god i'm sorry i'll try to try to figure this out i've also had quite a few beers so i'm trying to clean it up um she wants him to Penetrate her mouth with his member, right? Standard operating procedure. However, she's also going to wear a mask that only has an opening for her mouth and a nose. No eyes or anything else. That is her outfit. And she wants him to perform this act until she passes out. That is the actual goal that she wants to come out of this interaction. 
I'm not here to kink shame, so young player, do your thing. All right. And so he's like, okay, you're not willing to do anything you need done, girl. You just got to pay the play. And she was like, oh, you know, I got the money. I got the money for the... Never mind. <laughs> Mr. Gore. Anyway, um, so we're gonna we're gonna come back to that. Troubles in the dressing room given very much traumatized. Again, she's so pissed, she ain't can't even be bothered to go up on stage to shake her little moneymaker and she gonna end up coming ashore at the end of the night because again, she is outdone, she's flabbergasted, and what I do what I do hope for her is that she don't start acting like Fuego, acting like she won't out of the business, um, or try and talk to the cops because girl you give very much chatty Kathy, and I wouldn't put it past you. All right. Tommy comes to Madam's office and says, hey, T Miss Tandy is, is here for you. Now, Miss Tandy is another peculiar one. Her and her husband come down to the club, and they recruit gentlemen to come dance at their mansion. And they pay... Pay them top dollar, three, four, five times of what they can make in, at an, in a night at the club. And they're enticed by the money. And she's like, you know, if you want to keep making this money, give up your house, your car, your family, your career. You come live with us and basically be our sex slave. But what the guys don't know is they are blinded by the money and they end up doing so. And they end up violated and held captive, essentially. Which is why they had to go uh, rescue Rayshawn, um last episode. And so that is how, you know, she's coming to Madam's purview. Well, she was also a, a paying customer at the club. But again, she started luring the men away from the club for her own little twisted fantasies with her and her husband. So, yeah. Well, she's there. And she doesn't seem as afraid of Madam as she has been. Now, a little bit more history about them. There was a judge, um, Tandy and the judge hated Madam just the same. And they are the ones that were kind of leaking information or working in cahoots with Concierge's wife. Well, Concierge's wife ended up decapitated. The judge ended up electrocuted. And Tandy threatened within an inch of her life. So she's been laying low thus far. Now she is back again with a renewed confidence, a new cut, and a new color. Okay? And she you know, has her head to the sky and she's here to proposition Madam. Madam pays her dust and says nothing and just lets her speak the entire time. But she claims to have some good news to share with Madam. Her husband is, is entering entering the mayoral race, um, running for mayor, essentially. And in that capacity, if he wins, when he wins, she seems sure that he's going to win. He is responsible for assigning the chief of police, which means that D.A. Davis essentially would be out if we're working together and we come to an agreement i help you you help me mutually beneficial relationship right absolutely however your role is you're going to have to endorse him publicly at the and at the club and um in, in exchange any investigation and any any evidence that might be against you and your people will simply disappear and um also we're also going to need you to not say anything about the dealings that we have had with your dancers. Um, all that has to stay under wraps in order for that to take place. Um, again, madam, show no interest. Yay, nay, or none the wiser. Um, of course, she, she's going to probably think it over in the coming episodes. But again, she paid her dust and Tandy is just hoping to hear from her soon. However, it's kind of one of those deals like you can't pass up, especially with everything that you got going on. But We'll see. She might be able to wiggle her way from up under it. We'll hope. All right. Midnight is performing, as requested, um, with the VIP client, and he succeeded. She has collapsed on, onto the couch, and seconds later, Madam and Blue walks in because now it's time to address these two and figure out what the entire hell is going on. Um, Madam's like, you know, is she dead? Like, what the hell you got going on in here? And he's like, no, you know, this is one of my VIP clients. She asked me to do this. Like, I ain't trying to kill nobody right now because, you know, men I got a couple bodies, I'm sure. Um, and she's like, Blue, wake her up. Like, wake this lady up because what is she into? 
And so the girl wakes up and she wakes up in absolute joy. <laughs> you know, girl, this that was amazing. That was great. Like you've outdone yourself. Like, girl, just excited to be in damn near brain damage. Like, I again, you like it? That's your business. So I'm not gonna put too much on it. Anyway, Madam does ask her, hey, where'd you get this money from? And um, she also asked Midnight, hey, and she she claims, you know, well, we'll get into what she says. She asked Midnight, hey, how long have you known this lady? She's like about a month. He's like about a month. You know, she's been coming here just dropping money. She's she most of the money that I do make when I tip out comes from her. And she's been paying off a pretty penny um just to spend time with me. And um she's always paid him in bills, you know, in cash. And she goes on to Madam. And Madam asked her, hey, where you get this money from? She's like, I got it from my brother, Bill Pervy. And he he gave it to me last night. And Madam was like, that can't be possible. I've already killed your brother. Of course, she's already killed anybody that has had anything to do with her money going missing. So that can't possibly be true. So now we got to, you know, round out the usual suspects to figure out where the rest of my money is. Because why is y'all playing with me? Okay. We'll develop. We'll, we'll get back to it. Madam is leaving the club with Miss K in hand. Um, and her new security guard, don't know his name, didn't bother to learn it, comes out. She's like, listen, madam, I think you need to stand inside the club and lay low. There's a motorcycle motorcycle gang that, you know, keeps running, keeps riding through the parking lot every 15 minutes like clockwork. And so Tommy, he don't want him there. He's pissed. He's like, listen, you're dumb. Uh, motorcycle gangs are all around. And he's like, yeah, but the 15-minute intervals should give you an inclination that something's not right. Very much this great situation awareness because that would make sense to me too. But um Madam's like, listen, I got business with this young lady here, so I need to get up out of here. I'm gonna head out. It's it's not really up for discussion. And so at that moment the motorcycle gang rolls up and we learn that it is Ferdinand. Fitzgerald, whatever his name is. Um concierge's his brother. And he is pissed and he asked Madam, like, did you do that to my sister at all? Because um you know, her head ended up chopped off too. And he was, well, he asked Blue, was it her? And Matt was like, uh uh, that's some of my final work. The, uh, you know, don't give her credit for my work. I did it. And um, so he's pissed about that again. And he's just handed out all kinds of threats. And Madam is like, sir, either we're going to shoot it out now or you're going to go about your business. And so he's like, yes, so you know, my brother's not going to stop until you, you know, he's coming for your head. You know, just handing out a warning, whatever. Moving right along. Dime sends Tommy to get Amp out of the dressing room because he has not tipped out for the night. And he his ass is back there. He's asleep. He is asleep on the couch as if he is home from work. And he's he's just he's just drunk. He's just belligerent at this point. Um and Tommy's trying to get him out of there. He's like, listen, we're trying to close this thing up and go home. What I just what I think. Concierge needs somebody important to madam. In retaliation for his wife. I think that that person is going to be Amp. Just because it's down spiral. He's, he's not paying attention. He's not on his P's and Q's. I don't think that he ever was because I think he's only recently learning who his aunt is um, overall as well. But I don't know. I feel like it's going to be Doc because I feel like her daddy is way smarter than you know letting any of that go down. So I think it's going to be Amp. Those are the only those are the only two people that it's gonna hit hard. I think it's gonna be him. What y'all think? Let me know what y'all think in the comments. All right. Doc gets home and DA Davis is in his apartment. So she's decided, you know, I'm gonna go the illegal route now because I need to take her down. You know, I'm up for promotion. Blah blah blah. Everything we talked about in the last episode. She has unhooked his cameras and searched his apartment illegally. She ain't found nothing, but she claims she's there to offer him immunity again or to get him to work with her again, you know, for the last and final time, even though the last and final time was the last and final time to the last and final time. Every time you talk to this man, this is your last and final time, but you keep showing up, which leads to his assumption as well. He's like, listen, I think you're just here for a hookup, you know, and you just don't want to be detected, um, whatever. Now, what I will tell you is that we don't have a deal. I'm not going to do that, but what I'm about to do is strip down here while you sitting here all hot and flustered. And, um, you know, just, just let me go ahead and knock the cobwebs off for you right quick. And, um, you know, she gets up and tries to walk away and he pins her against the wall. And, you know, you know, horizontal tango ensues. Now, she didn't, she knows she done messed up now. She done messed up sleeping with a suspect. Um, however, if Tandy's husband can help her, 
it probably really won't matter because she'll be out of there no matter how it goes. So, you know, might be two forms of ammunition that um, Madam can use to, to get her off her, off her scent. She done let temptation. She done let that, that man just tempt her to trick her out of her position. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. What a shame. <laughs> okay. All right. Madam takes Kasha. K, whatever you want to call her. From the club to her mama's house. And her mama is none too pleased to have these people in her house tearing up her stuff, looking in her face. She tells the mama, like, listen. I knew this girl didn't get this, this money from, from Bill because I've already killed Bill. Bill is dead. He stole from me. He's, he's out of here. And so she tells her the whole thing, how we ended up here. And um, she spares no details. She even tells the mom about Miss Kay's peculiar fetishes that she likes to get from midnight. Just tells all this girl's business. And um, the mama is, she's clutching her pearls and she's flabbergasted um, as if she's a saint of some sort. And, um, Madam is telling her, listen, ain't you a type 2 diabetic? All right, cool. Go get me one of her needles. She's going to fill it with some stuff, some substance that when injected is going to go ahead and stop that heart right quick because you playing with me. You're not telling me where my money is. So they're tearing up the house, tearing up the house, tearing up the house, trying to figure out where her money is because we know, again, Bill ain't it. What we do know is that Bill probably came by after him and old boys went their own separate ways drop that money off at his mama house and like mama don't the shot money hide it if somebody come looking for it you know you don't know nothing you ain't see nothing you ain't know nothing now bill is gone and that money has to be tracked down somehow and so um she caught miss k claims her mama don't know nothing but i don't know mama's doing a little bit a little bit too much back talk claims she don't know nothing um and so they tear up the house they tear up the house they found the husband the husband has dementia i mean they done rolled his himself out there and um, Madam does a Google check on him and realizes, like, the mama ain't as saved and sanctified as she, as she claims to be. This man's kids have not seen him because this mama has cut off all contacts. She's a sole beneficiary of all his stuff to include his disability, money, you know, them type of black widow type type chicks. And she was like, oh, so not you taking nobody money, so it's not far-fetched that you would do it to me because you did it. You're doing it to him. And um and the mom and the mama's like, no, he didn't like them. They weren't taking care of him. She's like, well, you ain't doing it much better. You got him chained and drooling and pissy in this wheelchair. So what's really tea, mama? What's really going on? And so that gives her a little look into who this mama is, even though she claims to be so saved and sanctified and oblivious to what's going on. And so we have torn up this whole entire house, which it's only him and Blue. I don't know how y'all tore up that whole two-story house in that amount of time, but let's just say you did. And so, our um, mom was like, oh, check the couch. Cut the cushions on the couch. And so, now they cut the cushions on the couch. Of course, Mama's making a, a luscious effort to keep them from going in there. And the money is in the cushions um, on the couch. And so, now Madam is taking it back. Like, I know, I know you were sitting here lying the whole time when I just asked you to give me back what was mine. So, um, Madam literally walks up to her and pokes her in the chest with this needle. And now you you over here gasping for air. Now, now your heart got to stop because you, you just wouldn't give me what was mine. Um, and so she gets her money and leaves Miss K there to deal with the fallout of um what she has done. So now your mama, now your son, your mama and your brother did not killed over this money. And so you should just be glad that you made it out, Miss K, because obviously anybody can get it. All right. We're at the end of the episode, and Big D has somehow stumbled downstairs and found his way to where Tommy and Casanova is. And um, he sees that Casanova is beaten, tied up, and Tommy's down there with a gun. And he's like, well, what the absolute hell is going on out here? Um, And that is the way that the episode ends. So now, Big D, you brand new, and you done got yourself tied up in some shit that you didn't even need to see. But um, that's what happens when you don't mind your business. And you snooping around people's place of employment. So now you got to prove your loyalty. You got to get some skin in the game because you refuse to mind your business. Um, that's it. That's all. Let me know what y'all think about the episode. Drop it in the comments. Like, comment, share, subscribe, whatever it is that you feel like doing. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace.